scariest moment of my life happened whilst my friend and I were camping in eastern Canada as teenagers. We decided to sleep in this abandoned camper we found deep in the large forest that was near our town. It had been there so long that trees had begun to grow around it. We stumbled across it whilst we were exploring a few months back and thought it would be cool and brave to sleep in there for the night. So one weekend, we did it. We arrived after dark, because we'd gotten lost trying to find the camper. We were really low on power flashlight. So it made it even more difficult. Once we'd finally found it, we opened the rusty door and stepped in. The sounds inside the camper were shrill and echoey. There were typical camper things about cups, empty tins, swollen pulp fiction novels. Already tired, we holed up one end of the camper, where the bed had originally been before the cushions had rotted away, almost to nothing. A long hallway stretched the length of the camper, so we could basically see from end to end. It was a miserable night. There were several rats living in there. I saw them staring at us from a chewed part of our ceiling. When the wind blew outside the camper, it would shriek and groan. We even thought we heard a bear outside walking around. Still, we feigned bravery and acted like we were having a good time, but really, we were all on edge. At some point in the night, I woke up from an uncomfortable sleep. I sat up and adjusted myself, when I noticed some movement out of the corner of my eye. At the other end of the camper, there was a small window, and I looked and I saw a man's silhouette. He was clearly staring straight at me from outside. At first I thought maybe it was a weird shape or a tree or something, but when I moved to get a better look, the person clearly reacted, and then I froze. My heart was pumping, and I woke up my friend immediately saying someone is here, in a whisper, not taking my eyes off his profile. He woke up immediately, and I nodded towards the window. He saw him too. We whispered frantically about what it could be and why he would be staring at us. And for the next 10 minutes, no joke, we stared him down. The longer we stared at him, the more frightened we got. Occasionally he would move, but always keeping his eyes on us. Eventually I shouted at him, Hey! no reaction. My friend was braver than me and decided to shine the flashlight at him. As soon as we did, we realised our horrible mistake. It was not a window on the other side at all. It was a mirror. We had been staring down ourselves from the very start. Still, it was the most fearful, relieving, and funny moment of my life that I'll never forget. I was hitchhiking in Yukon Territory once and got picked up by a Native American couple. We were talking whilst we were driving and then they told me a story. They were very insistent about it and were explaining that a few months ago, they were driving to their parents slash in-laws house when it was dark and their car mysteriously died. Then, a strange white light hovered above their road in front of them. They stared at the light for about a minute and then it disappeared. They restarted the car fine at that point and drove to their parents house only to find out that they were six hours 
late. I was house-sitting for my parents who live in the actual middle of nowhere. The closest neighbour they have is about a mile away. My parents had taken their dogs with them on vacation to the beach. So it was an eerie silent house to be in. It was the kind of quiet that you wouldn't want to turn off the TV or you would be faced with nothing but the eerie sound of your breath and footsteps. On one completely pitch black night, void of any moon, I stepped onto the back porch for a quick smoke before bed. As I reached the bottom of the steps, I pulled out a cigarette from my pack and fumbled for my lighter. As I flicked the wheel, the glow of the small flame briefly lit up my surroundings. In the split second of my brief illumination, it became apparent I was not alone. In the few seconds it took my brain to process the dimly lit image, I realised I had just seen some massive, brown-haired, four-legged beast eating from one of the dog's bowls by the steps leading from the porch into the house. And I do mean massive. Easily twice the size of me, covered in some kind of dirty brown, human-like hair from front to back. I didn't make out its head, but I knew from a glimpse of its torso that it was something I've never seen in the wild. As I stood there in fear, from what was standing no more than three feet away from me, unseen in the blackness of night, it let out some kind of deep guttural grunt and plodded off into the woods, shaking the porch as it runs away, leaving me scared and shaking in the pitch black darkness with a still unlit cigarette hanging from my mouth. Needless to say I ran inside, turned on every light and hid in the most interior room of the house, like any grown adult man should. My brain couldn't process what it might be, but my imagination was filling in all the blanks with whatever scary beast could be lurking out in the woods just a few feet from my parents' back door, waiting to eat the shit out of me. A couple of weeks later, I found out there had been some reports of some of those giant feral pigs that had moved onto my parents' land. No giant scary monster things, just some overgrown hairy pig looking for a meal. I live in a small town in rural Australia. I'm a cyclist and I coordinate sport events, marathons, sell biking gear and whatnot. Around 6am one morning, I drove up to the mountains and on the way I passed a woman sitting by the side of the road. At first I thought, she could have been a hitchhiker, but there were no hotels around and she had absolutely no bags. I stopped my car about 400 metres away from her, grabbed a bottle of water out the boot of the car and walked down to see what was going on. That was the moment when I realised she was one of the most gorgeous women I had ever seen. She was probably around 20, pale as milk with long blonde hair down to her hips and one of those really German kind of looking hourglass figures and really blue eyes. Like this chick was crazy hot. She was wearing one of those long summer dresses that beach kids seem to love, which was freaking weird for the middle of the Australian bush. So I'm walking towards her like, oh my God, but I'm also thinking, what the hell? I hand her a bottle of water 
and ask her if she's lost or needs a lift back to town. She just stares at me. Doesn't take the water. No blinking. I'm thinking, oh shit. She's some kind of crazy. So then I ask her if she ran away from somewhere and she just said, no. She hadn't blinked yet. So I asked if she's waiting for someone to come pick her up and she just goes, no, again. I ask her where her house is and she just replies, here. I'm halfway up a mountain. There are no houses around here. So I was starting to get creeped out by this lady. I walked back to my Jeep and was about to drive down the mountain to get some signal to call the police to come and sort out this lady. She gets up and walks towards me. I was like, look, are you sure you don't want me to run you back to town? And she just says, no, again. I insist. Look, I don't feel comfortable leaving you here in the middle of nowhere. Please let me take you to the police station. She just turns around and walks off. Off into the bush, miles from anywhere, and I'm just sitting there like, what the hell? And then I started to get scared when the bug and bird noises started to come back. It made me realise I hadn't heard a single other sound whilst I was talking to her. Like no magpies, no crickets, no early morning sounds at all. I hightailed it out of there and called the coppers when I reached the bottom of the mountain. Basically said, just saw a woman up a mountain who refused to get in my car. And then I realised just how retarded that sounded and hung up. I have no idea what the hell happened then. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. Although not quite paranormal, I don't think I would want to be in any of those situations. But speaking of the paranormal, the next video will probably be ghost stories or something to that effect. So stay tuned for that by hitting the subscribe button now. Go on. And don't let the like button get jealous. Remember that if you have a story you wish to submit, send it over to my email in the description below to have it featured in a future video. And in case you missed them, here are some links to my other videos. So if you haven't seen one, be sure to check it out as you won't want to miss it. But anyway, for now guys I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.